Karen and I are going to just briefly outline the subject we've been developing. Um, as you can see, the tentative title is Indigenous and Intercultural Health. Um, and that's the front page. We chose the Whitney University platform for reasons we'll <coughs> briefly explain, um, but that's just a uh, shot of the open page. This is live, so you can do this no problem. And I'm currently working on bits and pieces, so we'll be changing over time as well. Um, one of the one of the pressures or levers for, for getting this going was a faculty review, which identified the absence of um, Indigenous-related curriculum, which for a large health faculty is something that um, everyone thought should be addressed. So. Uh, this is one part of an Indigenous engagement strategy which is just starting to, to gather momentum, I guess would be an accurate way to summarise it, Kerry, would it? Uh, yes. yes. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's early days. Um, we're trying to address the deficit. Um, there's currently very little. There, there are pockets of fantastic both teaching and research across the faculty, but they don't know about each other. There's nothing particularly um, public about and coordinated about anything. Um, so I did uh, do the inevitable survey to try and get gauge people's interest and whether they believe there was a need for an intercultural subject, an indigenous subject or a combination of both. And the clear message was there was strong interest in a combination of both, but a lot less for one or, or the other. So therefore it is a, a combination of culture general with some case studies of Melbourne local sort of ethnic cultures, I guess you could say, and with a major focus on Indigenous, and the central module is solely dedicated to Indigenous health and introducing people to basic competencies working with Indigenous people. Um, um, I guess on the closing of that, which you know we'll be doing um, through the Horat, there's um, one of the targets for that is increasing one of the Indigenous students in health sciences. And um, Victoria does really badly in that area. Um, there's not enough Aboriginal people doing those courses. Therefore, there's not enough people to teach it as well, because there's not graduates. Um, I'm on, you know, I'm involved in the nursing development course in Victoria because there's so few nurse Aboriginal nurses in um, Victoria. So these subjects are actually really important to Indigenous students as well because it gives um, health science. Is, um, tends to be very white in the past, and this provides an opportunity for other voices. So, when you look at professionalism in nursing, it often starts with Florence Nightingale, and there's absolutely no um, no acknowledgement of other cultural groups and having a history of nursing. So, Aboriginal people have had nurse, you know, what you would call nurses, you know, for 40,000 years, but that's not acknowledged like, in the nursing courses. So. It's, it's actually a really important thing for addressing a whole lot of inequities. And as I said, a number of people have, have you know, I just want to acknowledge that there has been a lot of <coughs> good work going on before, um, but they tended to be working in isolation and um, having trouble getting momentum with all the other pressures of you know, the mainstream curriculum and mainstream pressures. And people are obviously very uh, wary of treading on ground. They don't feel qualified to work in, as, as I am. And as Karen said, it's incredibly hard to find people who are both indigenous and qualified and available and interested in collaborating on a, a subject like this. So I feel like won the lottery being able to find Karen who ticks all those boxes very well. Um, Okay, that's fairly straightforward. I think I've covered most of those. The multidisciplinary aspect is probably worth talking about. Typically, subjects focus very much on a particular uh, you know, nursing, physio, whatever. This is deliberately much more open than that. Um, it takes a fairly interprofessional approach, which is particularly appropriate with intercultural and indigenous health, I think, because so often a single profession cannot hope to. Um, manage uh, care, you know, deliver appropriate care um, in a fragmented sort of monodisciplinary way. 
Um, social determinants approach is, is, is almost a given, I think, to be able to understand what you know the upstream factors that contribute to Indigenous and, and other cultures' health um, is, is critical for all health professionals. That's nothing new, but we're trying to sort of build on that sort of approach. Um, as it turned out, the nursing reaccreditation cycle has mandated that they have a substantial um, Indigenous component in at least one subject. Um, so this just happens to fall into some of their mandated requirements at the same time. So nursing have actually sponsored the development of this. But I'll stress again that it's, you know, while nursing is, can see itself clearly in the subject, it's, it's multi-professional. Um, I think social work also has a similar sort of set of mandated uh, requirements and uh, learning objectives and we've shaped the, the wording to make sure that they can see themselves very clearly in, in the modules as well. Um, I don't know whether it's truly flipped or whether we're flipped or what flipped is, but it's, 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 it doesn't have lectures as such. The, for a whole stack of reasons, uh, mostly pragmatic. The idea is for students to prepare for workshops by doing a couple of hours of online activities, trying to keep it simple, straightforward, um, and also, and then to do two hours face to face. So it's not a totally virtual subject, it's, it's, a, it's a balance that could be delivered across the semester or could be delivered in a block mode over a few days if necessary. Um, around 50% of the content is online, but trying to lock it in so that students really see strong connections between online, everything they do there has a, has a con con continuity with the face-to-face -face stuff, which has continuity with the assessment, that sense of being all on the same page. Sometimes subjects can be quite fragmented with learning outcomes over there and assessment activities there and class activities here. We're trying very hard to keep it integrated. Um, Obviously needs a lot of consultation and development, a lot more than your average sort of new subject. Um, Karen's doing a lot of that work, throwing ideas past the colleagues and um, I guess I guess um traditionally a lot of courses in around indigenous health are involved with the Aboriginal history, uh, which is important, and also looking at health statistics. But often what um, practical kind of people in you know, the kind of people that get attracted to health sciences tend to be practical, you know, they want to work with IVs, they want to give injections, you know, that, that kind of thing. So um, and often that history and those statistics aren't linked to practice. Um, so a, a very strong kind of component that we're putting in this is about practice. So if you're caring for an Aboriginal person in a hospital, what does that mean to me as a nurse? You know, what does it, what do I have to do? Um, if I'm a social worker working with an Aboriginal family, what does that mean? What does that, what does that mean that I do? So um, it's linking that sort of theory with practice. And often that's missing in um, Aboriginal health courses because I think that there hasn't been enough Aboriginal people in there graduating and getting in the mess to unpack it and think about it. So a lot of what I, the consultation I do is what, what do you do when an Aboriginal person comes in? Or how would you like to be treated in a hospital when you go in and have a baby? So um, there a lot of the conversations I've been having with people and just running past case studies, past Aboriginal health workers, you know, what, what do you think about this? Does this make sense to you? So that's really, um, yeah, some of the work I've been doing. Three minutes. Okay. Um, the open platform is being particularly appropriate in that you don't have much of a budget and to engage the group will of a whole entire this won't be owned or behind the projects and won't just have a semester if once have done it. It's going to be there. So I think that we've already um, established through some videos that we've produced that people are quite willing to give up a full day of their time, um, as it's turned out, to something that they, they can co-own and share. And the copyright, I think, which sort of pioneered 
sort of under the radar to some extent. You know, it's co-branded with the Trove doesn't own it, Fat Show doesn't own it, but we both are custodians of it. And um, you know, there's a management system for copyright, but it's basically open and it's it's not that usual tightly bound sort of, um, which prohibits a lot of a lot of broader use. Um, we can probably go straight through that. That's it's just a three module structure with you know standard sorts of macro learning outcomes with the enabling ones underneath. Um, obviously, a lot of people are deeply passionate in this area, and everyone wants to see themselves in it. And we've got requests to put you know a special emphasis on mental health, special emphasis on counselling, special emphasis on early childhood ageing, etc, etc. So that's a challenge and I think one of the ways to do this is to have a range of optional resources that students or courses can use to dive into rather than saying you must do this, this, this and this. They can say, well, if you're interested in early childhood development or breastfeeding, here's a little case study you can use to address this more general objective. Uh, finding good quality resources in the open space has been quite difficult. Um, it's actually harder to get stuff approved on the, the Wiki versus the Wiki Commons area than it is just to grab a picture from somewhere and acknowledge it. But it, it's so essentially the message there is it's been easy to develop our own, um, which probably seems not like a shortcut, but in fact it's the most pragmatic and approach. Probably that's because um, minority groups aren't really well observed in the Commons at the moment, um, and so we're adding to that. This is a very rough cut. This is the rough up. I did this in 10 minutes yesterday. Oh, not the subtitles, they took a lot longer. But um, this is just an example of grabbing a video clip, chucking it onto YouTube, and putting a couple of activities into it. So it sort of stands alone. So maybe that link's going to work. Yeah, the, act, the acting is totally amateurish. Um, some young bloke with a beard there, about one minute long, so we'll probably wrap up on that and ask for questions or we'll do it later. Uh, uh, we've got time, I think, to get questions. 